Great, so thanks both for joining us. Um, I'm going to proceed with the, the webinar that was designed for quite a larger number of people, but it'll be fine, we're just two people. <laughs> um, I think we'll still have a good time. Um, and hopefully you two will both, will both learn a lot. Um, I am going to move on to this slide. Thank you for both sharing. Um, I want to briefly make a land acknowledgement um, for what from what, where I and Ali both are in the Bay Area. Um, we're currently on unceded Liz Jan territory of Hui Chin that is now known as Oakland, Berkeley, Alameda, Piedmont, Emeryville, and Albany, California. The Confederated Villages of Liz Jan are one of many Ohlone nations. Um, there's a link here in the slides. Um, Ali, can you copy the, um, the link to the slides also, please? Uh, if you want to find out more about the Sagarate Land Trust, which is the local, our local um, women-led indigenous organization that's working to rematriate the land. Um, and if you need to know more about the land that you are on, then if you visit, if you Google um, Native Land Digital, um, you can find out about indigenous groups all over the planet. Okay, so this is our... I'll go over our learning objective agenda for today, but there are only four of us. We can probably briefly introduce ourselves in person as well as just uh, in the chat. So I'm Anna. I'm the um, Senior Program Manager for Solar Education with We Share Solar. I was a longtime high school teacher um, and built solar suitcases with students over many years, um, about eight, eight years. And I started working full time for We Share Solar last summer. Um, and I'm very happy to be doing this. I enjoy curriculum development and uh, doing these kind of teacher trainings in person and, and online. Ali, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Ali Pemrel. I'm the program manager for We Share Solar. I've been with the, the organization for six years now. Um, I basically, if you have any questions about the equipment or anything, you can always email me. In fact, I'll put my um email right in the chat right now um and yeah just happy to meet you both today hello my name is helen i left um i am with the kashaya band of pomo indians i work in the environmental planning department as the education coordinator um this was passed along to me from nina nina shared this with me and so um we were kind of thinking of getting into energy training and just knowledge for the kids. So I wanted to see if I could incorporate this into something for them to do at some point. So thank you so much for hosting the webinar. Thanks for being here. My name is Pooja Gupta. I teach physics in high school. And, uh, and Jennifer, uh, one of my school uh, but here she shared this information with me that it's about to prepare. And that's why I joined because I teach physics. We have a unit, which is, so your program absolutely aligns with everything that we teach in that unit. So I'm very interested in this program. And hopefully that I should be able to incorporate that in my curriculum this year. Great. Well, um, let me just briefly go over the learning objective. So I was a high school teacher for a very long time. Um, I'm trying when I do these to kind of model the, the way I was trained to teach. I was trained um, in teaching NGSS. Um, the NGSS standards, Oakland was an early implementer school district. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of trying my hardest to, to still do that even I'm training teachers because I, I have a lot of respect for the standards and I think when they're done properly they can be really, really powerful. Um, so I'm following the 5e lesson plan. There's a link here if you've never heard of that. Um, I found it a really great way to plan plan lessons. Um, and I'm also, um, I've written a learning objective for you too that aligns with the, with the three different uh, dimensions of NGSS. So the learning objective is that teachers, that you will be able to track the transfer of electricity by modeling the components of the solar suitcase so that you can explain the flow of energy in a standalone system. Um, and we're going to go through these five steps, engage, explore, explain, elaborate, and evaluate. Um, you may have already looked at our curriculum that's free and online. If you haven't, if you need help accessing it, please stay on at the end and we can help you with that. 
I've got some very simple norms, which will be pretty easy to follow because there's only four of us. <laughs> but if you have a question or comment, if you could use the chat and we'll see if there's time to address it at the moment or whether we should do it later. Um, in, well, you will have your cameras on. So thank you for doing that. I really appreciate it. It's really nice. <laughs> um, uh, step forward, step back. Ah, there's only two of you, so I think it'll be fine. Um, and conversation. Sometimes when we talk about solar, people can get very... Um, kind of into the details, into technical details, especially if they're interested in solar for their house or um, understanding kind of politics around green energy, which is all very interesting and great to talk about. But I want to make sure that um, conversations stay student centered. If it's not relevant to what, you know, a middle school or a high school student is going to be learning, it's probably um, a conversation that is better had a little bit later. Um, so are those are those norms OK with everybody? Great. Okay, I am trying to work out how I access the poll that I made. Um, is it in here? Yes, here it is. Okay, I made a, I've got a quick poll, one question. Um, how do I actually make it work though? Did a whole year on Zoom teaching and now I'm struggling to remember where stuff is. You launch it. I can do it right here. Oh, you can? Okay, great. Yeah, go just for it. The, the first one? Yeah, the first one. Solar Suitcase Familiarity. Thank you. Okay, just uh, questions. A question. How familiar are you with the solar suitcase? So have you worked? Never. You've either never worked with one before. You built one in a workshop and never in a classroom. You have some experience building these with students or you've built them many times or none of the above if some other situation works for you. Great. OK, so there's only two of you. <laughs> but um, some this is great. You're both. This is the definitely the place to be. Um, one of you has never worked with them before. Um, the other says none of the above. So do either of you want to share anything about your experience so far? Last year we got one solar box and we made it and it didn't work. So, and we checked everything that it's connected, but it didn't work. So, work. none of the books. Okay. I'm sorry it didn't work. Hopefully we can help you with that. <laughs> I have never even seen one. So, okay. <laughs> I this is all new to me and I'm... I'm really interested in just learning about it and seeing how it works and great okay yeah good yeah. well I'm, I'm really glad that you're here okay so we're going to move into our first activity um this is a jambled so I was going to put you two in a breakout room but I think yeah I don't think I think we might just stay all together I think that might make more sense so Ali's about to copy a link to a jamboard um you, when you open this, you can see it. If you would like to make a copy, um, you need to click on these dots over here on the right um, and click make a copy. And then that's one that you can edit. Um, we'll just do this together. So I'll move everything around. Um, but if there's something that you think oh, I would like to use that with my students, it's in, it's in our curriculum, um, but you could also make a copy right here and then you'll have it saved actually in your Google Jamboards. Um, so, Pooja, you know a little bit more about this, so you might be able to take the lead. I've got names of components, pictures of components, and then definitions. Are there any that you, or is there one that you can match up and I can move them for you? Actually, why don't we start with, I'll start with a picture that might be easy. So if I choose this picture, what does that represent and what's the definition for it or description? Uh are we do you want us to speak yeah I'm okay um so that would be the solar panel yes. and that would convert um elect oh wait hold on no that's not convert, convert sunlight no. there we go right here i i don't know you can't see what i'm doing so never mind <laughs> shouldn't point to it <laughs> um oh. great okay so we've got the solar panel convert sunlight to electricity hi kanisha welcome i'm glad you could join us Thank you. Uh, what about this one? Anyone know what this one is?
battery? Yes, thank you. Straight in there. <laughs> That's the battery. Um, definition for the battery over in the red. I want to go with stores electricity as chemical energy. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. Why don't I go for this one? Because this is the one that you're the least likely to have actually ever seen before. I'm going to go with switcher circuit breaker. Is that right? Actually... No. No. Not. Okay. But well done for trying. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Pooja, you built one before. Do you recognize this? Yeah, so uh, light bulb is the light bulb, mm -hmm. and it converts electrical energy into light energy. Uh, then we have a change controller. Charge controller. So that charge controller is that one. Yeah. Which is, and the switch so acts like the brain. Yeah, 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 exactly. I'll just That's type the charge it. controller, and the switch or circuit breaker, which... Um, yeah, please on the positive side. Great. Okay, so when you do these with students, um, it's very likely that they, you know, have never seen some of these components, but also that they have seen others. So you can start with an activity like this just to introduce them to the components. And really, the what I think is amazing about our solar suitcase is that you build it, you have a great time, um, and then you know this stuff. And this is, this is, these are the basic components of a standalone solar system. So what we're building with students is very small, um, but once you understand these components and how they connect together and how to wire them, you can design something that's much larger, much more complex, and hopefully have some desire to, to learn more about, about solar engineering. Okay, thank you for doing that. So hopefully um, you've been able to open that. Um, we'll come back to this a little bit later. Um, and hopefully you'll be able to use the copy. If you make a copy, you'll be able to use that. Just to remind you, click here, click make a copy. You'll be able to use that to, um, to look at the, the wiring, which we'll get to a bit later. Um, Kanisha, do you want to just briefly introduce yourself and then we'll, we'll continue? Sure. Sorry I'm late. I had a hard okay. time getting in. Oh. Um, I'm um, Kanisha Walker. I am a middle school um technology um, engineering teacher in the state of Virginia. I'm in Henrico County um, public school system. And you, am I right in thinking you, you haven't built a solar suitcase before or you've just um, recently discovered that? I, I did one over the summer with Remy Pangle from oh. um, James Madison University. So um, I, yeah, I had, I, I just, what maybe two two months ago we <laughs> just walked through um a solar um suitcase with her and I'm looking to kind of integrate this into the classroom at some point probably the second half of the school year with my seventh graders or eighth graders or some combination right well it sounds like you teach the perfect class this would fit in really well yes did you say technology and engineering yes wow that's so awesome. Mm -hmm. Lucky kids. And lucky you to get to teach that. <laughs> That's really Thanks. cool. <laughs> I love the flexibility. I love the flexibility in the state of Virginia with being able to teach how I would like to teach as long as I cover the competencies. So I've been looking for different things to um to to teach in the classroom. Um and with our curriculum changing last year, I really had more flexibility. So I decided, okay, how can I get this um, integrated into the classroom? Great. Well, we're very happy that, that you're here. Thank uh, you for representing the East Coast in our call. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna move on to, to explore the, the next, the second of the five E's. And I'm assuming Probably, well, Pooja, do you have a physical copy of the assembly guide? I'm assuming that um, Helen and Kanisha, neither of you do. You have a suitcase. Do you have the, do you have the assembly guide, the, the, the book? If it's inside the suitcase, then yes, otherwise no. <laughs> um, so 
And now that there are three of you, I'm actually going to put you into a breakout room because I think it's quite, even though you'll just be in this, you just won't be with me and Ali. <laughs> I think it's quite good to just kind of talk about stuff without us there just for a little bit. You know, I mean, you all work with kids. You know it's not in there. So I do not have one right now. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I mean, whenever you receive but a I have this one. Yeah, that's the um that just kind of gives a summary of how to use it. But that's okay. We have a link, um, which I think Ali has just copied. Yeah, I put it in the chat. So um, if you open the digital copy of the assembly guide, obviously it's not as ideal to navigate than a, as a compared to a book, but I've tried to give you as much information as possible. So um what I, what I'm gonna do is just put the three of you together to to look through this. Um, you have different levels of experience with actually building the suitcase or seeing kids build the suitcase. Um, the, the assembly guide is is quite extensive and it really tells you everything you need to know. It's very user friendly. Um, most people agree that you give it to students with the solar suitcase and they can pretty much work out everything themselves. But what I want you to do is just look at these two sections, assembling the suitcase um, and visual inspection and just see as you kind of flick through it, where do you think students will need the most help and guidance? Um, Ali, could you just copy the... Hello, welcome back. I'm your breakout room of everybody. <laughs> um, what, what, what did you all come up with that you, where you think students are gonna need support? I need support in following the instructions. So that they know that they have to stay on task and get finish this much every day. So something like that. That's what I need to do for my class. Right, just really like going through them step by step. Yeah, because they get very excited. I mean, you really have to make sure they actually follow the instructions rather than I've many, many times I've seen kids, they find a picture in the assembly guide and they just try and copy it, which can work, but it's not, it's not very wise. <laughs> Was there anything else that, that came up in terms of places where you think students might need help? Yeah, I think, I think that was the same thing I said is just attention to detail and following each step, you know, <laughs> helping them, like guiding them, follow each step one by one yeah. um because that's what I was thinking too when I saw some of the pictures is like yeah they might think oh I can just here's the you know outlet here's the plug <laughs> I think it's very easy especially if you're excited yeah it's great we have really great pictures but sometimes they're too good and the students don't <laughs> they need to read anything <laughs> yeah <laughs> any other comments that came up no, just like hand hand to eye coordination, just mm -hmm. what they see they do, um, and and just follow it, just being slow and and following each each step. I think I, I teach middle school, so that yeah. you know sometimes there's still some developmental things that you know as we as when we were children we did like handwriting or things of those type of motor skills. Um, uh, can affect the hand coordination of them doing certain projects. So being mindful of that, that where we were as children and doing something is not where these children are and having a little bit more time to get through that and for them to just slow down with it on top of that actually makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. Oh no, we lost Pooja. Hopefully she comes back. Um, well, you brought up the our first point I mean, you will clearly work with kids <laughs> um so yeah going slow going go slow to go fast um having really helping the the kids slow down we have you may have seen as you scan through these embedded questions which are very easy to just kind of gloss over and they can be but if you do want a kind of a, a strategy to help them slow down you can make those like mini reflection or mini writing assignments or discussion assignments um just to kind of create, help create some meaningful pause and help everyone slow down. You also might find that you want to have students kind of move through a, a similar pace versus just kind of see maybe this group does it fast, this group does it slow. So there are, there are, there are things in the guidebook to, in the assembly guidebook to help you do that if you want. Um, an issue that we see 
often is the orientation. Maybe you notice that, that a lot of the components, because it's a DC electric system, which means the electricity has to flow through in one direction. So if you put something in upside down um, or sideways and then wire it in that configuration, it's not going to work. So almost every single time a system doesn't work, that's why um, something's wired, something's sideways or upside down. Um, we also wanted to make sure that you know that the charge controller, um, let me just grab mine, my little suitcase. Did you say you've never even seen one, Helen? I have not. No, this is all new to me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, let me show you mine. I'll just unblur my yeah. background. Um, so that you can actually see. Okay, so this is this is a solar suitcase. Um, and then inside, just remove the mic so you can be wrong. Um so here's the inside. Um you can see the components we went over earlier. Oh, uh, yep. The charge controller, which is like the brain. This is where we plug in the solar panel, the battery. Um, and then this is where you can plug in the loads. Um, so the thing we want to draw your attention to is on the charge controller. I don't know if you can really see it on my screen, but in real life, it's very easy to see. There's a, there's a blue temperature sensor surrounded by a protective piece. Um, if this blue temperature sensor breaks, the whole thing stops working. So this is very, very important to protect. That's why that's there. Oh, great, thanks. In fact, this one is broken. Oh yeah, that's the broken one. <laughs> Let me see if I can exit. Can you go to um, like full screen, Anna? Yes. With... All right. Just back. Oh, my, my so, I, okay, there we go. Oh, this, okay. This piece right here has a little blue nub that comes out and there's usually a um, like rubber grommet over it to protect it. This okay. one, you can see the little rubber grommet fell off and then that blue piece isn't even there. So now the whole thing won't work just because of that one. Um, Morning Star or Sun Saver has called it the Achilles heel um, of the of the whole system. like. It's a great charge controller. That one little piece is just gets really damaged really easily. Okay. Um, That's good to know. Yeah. That could be tricky with the kids. Like, don't touch this one section. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think the only time it really gets damaged is if they have this and they put it face down on a mm. table or something, you know, it's like, just be gentle with these pieces. They're expensive pieces and they're, yeah. you know, it's it's like... Uh, you just got to, as with anything, treat it gently. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I might just reiterate for Pooja, who was, um, said her suitcase didn't work. Yeah, Anna yeah. was, Anna was talking about one of the, like 95% of the time when something doesn't work, it's because the orientation is off on something. So you might have... You might have a solar um, solar receptacle like this, and if you can see, there's writing on it. And if the kids put it in like this, upside down, the whole system also won't work, or at least the maybe whatever load you're trying to light won't work. Okay, so, so yeah, that, we did not know that. Yeah, so you have to make sure that the writing, and in the book, it, it says it has a little orientation um, icon, and it says it on every almost every step it says make sure that you have it so i'm i'm probably would bet that if your case isn't working it's because something is and anna was saying that the direction has to the electricity flows in one direction so you have negative or positive and if it's upside down it's not going to flow in the right direction um the only other thing that usually is a reason why it's not working is because the battery is dead um the battery is one object that won't last as long as the others you know most parts in this solar mm -hmm. suitcase last 10 to 20 years the battery is more like five or so and if it doesn't get charged if it sits in a closet for a year yeah um, it probably might be dead so that's the only other thing is like if it's okay. not working it's usually the orientation and i would just check and then the other piece is um, usually that battery so how do i check the battery um that's a great question so i think on the 
if if your if the battery is dead, would it it would not show that it's charging, right, Anna? Yeah, Pooja, when you when you turn it on, does it, do any lights come on on the charge controller? So you have these I lights here. It was last year, last school okay. year that we did it. But I think it does. So okay. I would check these three lights indicate if the battery is full, halfway empty, and actually on a lithium battery, basically mm -hmm. this is if it's yellow, it's almost empty. If it's red, it's all it's pretty you much really dead. Want it to be green. Yeah. So if you turn it on and it's red or yellow, and then you try to charge it and it stays red or yellow, that could indicate that the battery isn't fully working. There is a way I'm not familiar with to check it with a um. Yeah, you can meter. measure the, you can measure the voltage of the battery to see if um. Okay, yeah. I'll do that. Yeah, I don't remember charge, which if one. If the charge controller turns on, then 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 the battery, then that part of the system is wired correctly. If you weren't able to turn on a light or you weren't able to charge a phone, almost certainly it was because something was, was upside down. That's okay. Right. And the instructions are there in the guidebook. They're just, yeah, they're just missed regularly. <laughs> yeah, you can see on this slide on the right with this piece that I was showing you here, it mm -hmm. has a little orient um, icon there that's just reminding you that it has to be a certain direction. Um, is there anything else about this slide, Ali? Uh, just, let's see. Um, mostly the each of the wires come with this little, you'll see in the top right, um, it's showing that there's a little piece of insulation on the wires. This usually is only for if it's never been built before, but um, just make sure you pull that piece off or it's not gonna make a connection and things won't light up. Also, if you put it into a Wago, which is that, piece in the middle with the orange levers. If you put it in there with the installation still on, it will get stuck and you can never get it out. So you just have to make sure the kids are following, again, following the instructions and pulling those insulation pieces off. Um, but yeah, Pooja, you can also always um, email me. So my suggestion would be to go back, make sure everything's oriented, check the battery. If it's still not working, let me know and we can troubleshoot a little bit more. And you can always do a Zoom with you as well, like with the yeah to, to help you troubleshoot. Yeah. I was wondering, uh, can we get one or two more? Because uh, we have two right now that we found. Yeah, we can talk well, about I that. Think, off. Yeah, I, let's I, talk I, about I, that at the end. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. Let's let's. Uh, I want to try and get through these these other sections of uh, understanding mm -hmm. the suitcase. But then, if you if you can stay on at the end, we can talk about more um specifics for your classroom. Um, okay, so I wanted to show you, this is the, the explain section. So um, what, as I said earlier, you can build the solar suitcase. You can do a hands-on, have a hands-on experience in the classroom and have a great time. But the question is, what have you learned? What have the students learned? And if you are able to take the time in your classroom to look at the wiring diagram and have students understand the flow of electricity, then you're meeting um, the standard of being able to, to, to track the flow of electricity. Um, and I really wanna encourage you to think about that. So I wanted to spend a bit of time just showing you how to do that. Um, if you're doing this in a science classroom, it makes sense because you meet the standards, but even if you're not, the, the, the confidence this gives kids when they can explain something that's pretty technically complicated to somebody else is, um, is quite astounding. So I just wanted to go over this in the hope that you'll feel confident to do it with your students. So here you, you can see, I have a printout, um, a, an image of a blank wiring diagram. You have access to this in our curriculum on one of our worksheets. Um, I'm, what I'm gonna do is just kind of click through the different, um, the different circuits and explain them briefly. Um, let me just actually take out my solar suitcase so you can see the back of it. Because um, Helen, you have not seen it before. So I'll just remove it. Okay, here we go. So, oh, I'm blurred. <laughs> I'm blurred, there we go. So this is, this is the back of the solar suitcase. So when the students build this, you know, this whole thing is just this one piece of metal and they populate everything, they screw everything in and then they, they do the wiring. And this is this is another place where they can make mistakes. You know, you can connect one wire to the wrong place. So if when they've finished this whole project, they can show this to somebody, turn it on and then say, okay, this is how electricity flows from here to here to here. 
that's really amazing. But to be able to do that, you really need to understand the back. So you have access to this, um, this image that I'm showing you. And you have these slides. So I, when I first taught this, I definitely had to go through it a few times to really get it. And I, I recommend doing that. I'm going to go through it relatively quickly and just give you an overview of, uh, of how this all works. So, oops. Okay. Okay. So this is slightly different. This is a picture that's a bit easier to see. Um, once this is wired, you have three circuits. There's the solar circuit, which is the first one we'll look at, um, the battery so circuit and the load circuit. And everything has a different color, so it's easy to follow and understand. Um, here is the solar circuit. So we have yellow wires that show the positive side of the circuit and white show the negative. So when electricity comes from the solar panel, it comes to the solar receptacle, and then that electricity can flow through the main switch, the main breaker, provided it's turned on. If it's not turned on, it can't. And then it can flow into the, this is the connect to the charge controller. Um, to complete the circuit, and any circuit needs to be a, a circuit, a circle, we need a negative wire to take that electricity back to where it started. So that's that's our first circuit, the solar solar circuit. The next one is the battery circuit. So if the battery is charged and we're using electricity from the battery, we're going to pull electricity from the battery port here. Again, it's gonna go through the main breaker. It's gonna to go to the charge controller and then it can return back to the battery. The other option is that if it's actually receiving energy from the solar suit, from the solar panel, um, it can it can flow in the opposite direction. So electricity can flow directly from the charge controller into the battery. Um, that's why we have a charge controller. One of the jobs of the charge controller is to make sure the battery doesn't get too much electricity. Because as you can see, there's no um, there's no breaker here. So this is the kind of the most dangerous part of the circuit for the battery. But the charge controller does the job of of monitoring that. Um, the charge controller, which you can't see here because this is the just it just isn't shown. It's just showing where the wires go in. Um, it's the brain. It directs where electricity goes. So once it's in the chart in the charge controller, the charge controller can decide. Okay, that energy is going to go to the battery or to the load. So the final circuit is the one that's more complex um, because here we're charging two different receptacles. So um, you can plug in a light here. You can plug in a USB port to charge a phone here. So in this case, there's electricity flowing through the system. It's at there's it's available at the charge controller. It can flow along this wire into one of these terminal blocks. Um, the wires all meet inside here and form an electrical connection. So from this wire, it can then flow along this wire to this switch and to this receptacle. And it can also flow along this wire through this breaker to this receptacle. And then in both cases, there's negative wiring that takes the electricity back to a second terminal block and then back to the charge controller. So more complicated, but really it's just the same as the other circuits. It's just kind of doubled um, with these, these terminal blocks that, that spread the electricity out. Um, the next slide is going to show you everything. So you can go through an activity where you, you know, you you label everything, you color it in. It's quite relaxing, really, <laughs> for kids, <laughs> especially older kids, like, oh, we get to do some coloring. Um, and then what you can do is, if I keep clicking, we should see basically an animation. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so this is going to show you what I explained. So here we have electricity flowing from the solar panel into the charge controller, back out of the charge controller, into the battery to charge the battery. And then it can flow back along the negative wire to complete the circuit. It can then flow back along the solar negative to complete, complete the whole circuit. So that kind of slowly, I mean, now it looks a bit of a mess with arrows everywhere, but if you go through it slowly, you can see how um, 
how the electricity flows to charge. And then on the next slide, we can see how we would light the bath that the one of the um the light bulbs. So here if we start in the battery, we have electricity flowing through the main switch along the other red wire into the charge controller, then out of the charge controller to one of the terminal blocks. It can then distribute to the switches or the pop-up breaker and light the light. And then we follow the white, the, the white wires all the way back. So back to the charge controller. And then back to the battery. Okay. And that's the <laughs> and that's the whole circuit. So it's definitely it, on first glance, it's like it's quite a lot, but once you've explained it a couple of times, it's you know, middle school, I've taught this to middle school kids, they can understand it, they need time and they need practice. And the main thing they need to practice is explaining it. Um, but then when they can do it, it's amazing. They absolutely love it. So a nice simple analogy is um is that this is it's very similar to a heart. So a solar circuit is much like the circulatory system in the body. We have positive electric, we have wires that are carrying the positive side of the circuit. So from the solar to the battery, and then the negative from the battery to the solar, just like we have veins and arteries in our body, bringing blood from the heart and to the heart. So how does, how do you feel? Oh, more pictures. Okay. Okay. So how, how, how did, did that look? Oh, the thumbs up, nice. <laughs> so the question is, do you think you can explain any of that now without? Yes. yes. Would you, um, now there's only two of you, so we lost Kanisha. Would you like to go into a breakout room too, or should we just do it here? Let's just do it here. Yeah. So. Okay, so I, I don't have full confidence, but we'll see <laughs> it's fine you don't you don't need full confidence okay so I'm going to um I'm going to go back to the jam board unless Pooja did you did or did either of you open it and make a copy um I have not yet but I I can do that right now you, what what if if you're feeling especially brave what would be great is if one of you could share your screen and just see if you see if you could do it and there are two options this is a differentiated you've got an easier option and then a more challenging option so this is this is option one relatively simple um there's no wires you just kind of draw lines to connect stuff and then um version two is that is the whole the whole wiring diagram and jamboard is great because it's got the exact right colors that we need so what you can do is click on pen um you can you can choose blue, yellow, or red, which are the colors that we need, and white. So you can choose one of these and then you can draw a wire, however you like. So do either of you feel brave enough to... Uh... So we are doing it on your, your jam board, right? Well, you can make a copy of this. Um, and if one of you wants to, you can share your screen and practice it live with us. Um... I cannot share my screen because I'll be doing it on computer and this is on my phone. Okay. Somehow, yeah. You want to try, Helen? Uh, like sure. It? Yes, I can try. Yeah. I'm Yay. just trying to get, yeah, why not? <laughs> um, okay, I have it open out. I, I did miss if you were pointing it out because I was trying to save that copy, but I do have it. Let me share your screen. Okay. Great. Okay, so this is what I have. Mm -hmm. And okay. wire. Here, pen. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, I see. All right, so blue. Um, this is this is tricky. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now it, it looks a lot different. <laughs> it's also right, when you... <laughs> kind of upside down from the way we were looking at it before. <laughs> okay. Um if so I, I remember. Okay, because solar, solar, wait, hold on, because aren't there, there was little numbers somewhere here, so I'm Come trying on, to... down from what we had, I thought I'd fix that. Yeah, it was like, this doesn't look right. It's that other one. It's been so, so long, flipping things upside down, 
and then yeah, flipping them again and getting yeah. them. I guess I ended up with one that's the wrong way around. So, so yeah, look at that four prongs <laughs> where two are filled in and two are not. That's where the solar is. Yeah, so the this other side, side, other side, yeah. move to the other side. Here? Go up on this side, yeah, up, 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 or down. I don't know. I'm, I'm putting it <laughs> yeah, up somewhere. Yeah. So you mean down. Scroll, scrolling up or? Yeah, you were there, the mouse was there. And now go down, 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 down. This is solar. This is somewhere. a solar chart. Yeah, that's yeah. where the solar, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, oh, that, that's kind of confusing. So I'm assuming. You want a yellow wire that comes from that to the switch? Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's good for your brain to do it upside down, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm, 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 line. <laughs> okay, I, so the. Yeah, so keep following so, that up to the switch. Great. So it's going to go there. Uh, okay. And then I need the white white one for the negative charge, right? So you there are there are two yellow no, ones. The negative one is the one that is coming from this second one. So it's not the negative from here. One. Yeah. No. The negative comes from here. Yeah. Did you say there was two um yellow yellows coming from here? I'm gonna say so like, one yeah. is no. So is I think in between there's a switch if I'm not missing. So the solar is connected with two wires. One is positive, one is negative. Right. Negative one is going to like number that. two. Can you both see that as well? There. Yeah. Um, this one is negative one. So to two. Yeah, that's negative one. Okay, because that's what I remember just seeing that these little uh, circles I got right here had numbers on them so that was a little helpful because mm -hmm. i did i do remember that yellow going mm -hmm. through one yeah. and then white going through two okay um white doesn't really show right can you see that yeah white doesn't show everyone this you could use black i'll use yeah i'll use black okay so then would it go here is that incorrect uh, that so now the the where you started that line was from the battery port, which is this one here. So the solar was let me turn it so it's this way around. There we go. This is the way around that we've got it. So the solar's down here, and then the battery was up there. Okay, what in the solar? I forgot. Oh, okay, so hold on. Let me make okay. this bigger. So Helena, Helena, right? Um, Helen. Helen. Okay, so Helen, we're going to erase the yellow and the black, and we're going to start with number one point, that the small circles, right? We have six of them. So we're going to start from there. So one is yellow. So it's going, the wire is going towards the switch in between, right? So you see yellow. one is... No. One. Yeah, this one. So you have wire. You're going to color it yellow. It's going there. To the switch. Color it. The to same wire. Yeah, going, no, 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 no. Not this one. No, not there. there. I think. Why I think we have to identify yeah. them, right? So this wire is already connected. You see it? So Helen, I think what might be confusing is on this diagram. You're you're just trying to like color in the wires that are already there. I think you're trying to draw new wires. But can you see there's already a wire drawn? Oh, you mean using the wires that are already yeah. there? Oh that, my goodness. Yeah. Okay. So I <laughs> make it a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. okay. I thought you were having me go. And just on memory, I was like, this is, you know, I'll try it. Very hard. So this, this one is I yellow. I could just All do this, you mean? There we go, that's right. <laughs> oh, my yes. oh, my gosh. So oh, my gosh. The one that go is going on the other side, everything is yellow. Yes, yeah, so oh, that part that it crosses is also yellow. Yeah, this is so yellow. it's going like this for yeah. the first one? No, just, just all the way down to the solar receptacle. That's it. And then the solar panel. Oh gosh. Okay. So down here, down to here. Yeah. So that wire it crosses. Great. And the number two is white. So we're gonna have black color for it. <laughs> oh my god! I did not put that together. That these were lines <laughs> that were literally guiding me to where I need to go. I was just making it up. All right. It's great. You were really using your brain. I was trying. I was like, I. Yes, no, I don't really have were. great. I don't have great um photo memory, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this is great. I'm going to stop us here because this is 
this could take a long time. The, the, I can see if we kept on, we, it would have taken a long time before I figured <laughs> you, that one out. You completed the solar circuit, so you you can see that obviously with some practice, you can teach this to kids. But it does take practice. I practiced this so many times before I explained it, and I've never explained it online before. So, <laughs> um, but it definitely uh, it's worth it's worth it. It's worth the uh, it's worth trying because yeah. Uh, yeah, if, if the kids can get it, and it's fine if you don't if you don't really understand it, you can work it out together. You know, with with that PowerPoint, um, you can all you can all get through it together. Thank you very much. I really <laughs> very, especially considering you've never even built one of these before. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, could you stop sharing your screen and I'll share mine? Yes. Stop share. Okay. Great. We don't have a ton of time left, and I want to respect your time, so I'm just gonna go through the last couple of things. Um, okay, and remember you have access to all of this, you know, you have access to all of these things. So when you're getting ready to, to build, you can um, think about how you wanna use them. Okay, I just wanted to quickly uh, talk about continuity testing. Our guidebook has very, very, very clear instructions um, of how to do it. Um, but I just wanted to make sure you understand what it's for. So after you've built the suitcase, um, before you start plugging things in, you can do something called continuity testing, which is a real life um, electrician skill. It's something that electricians do. If you've ever had someone come to your house to test something, this is what they've done. Um, and it, it requires a multimeter. The one I've got here isn't probably isn't the one you're going to use, but it, it, it works in the same way. Um, basically, what you'll do is you'll, if you follow the instructions in our in our multimeter, in our guide, um, you'll be able to set up your multimeter to um, to continuity testing. You're looking for that symbol, this um, like sound symbol. And once you have it set up correctly, when you touch the probes together, I don't know if you can hear that, but you'll hear a beep. What this is doing is this is sending out a tiny, tiny, tiny current. Um, if that current has a circuit to flow through, it will flow through, complete the circuit, and it will send a message back to the multimeter and it will create that beep. So you use this to check, can electricity flow from this point to this point? If it does, you'll hear a beep. If it doesn't, you, you won't hear a beep. So our, our, our assembly guide, and you can see this in the quality control continuity testing section, it shows you lots of very different specific steps of like test this, test this, test this. You should hear a beep, you shouldn't hear a beep. Um, and this is a good place, um, Pujo, if you're, you know, if you're struggling, if you have a, something that just doesn't work and you can't work out why, mm -hmm. go back and do this step. Um, okay. The kids will, they'll get it, but then sometimes they might just skip steps because it's a bit repetitive, <laughs> but it's super important. Um, and and if you if you find that something's not working, if you go mm -hmm. back to the continuity testing, you find that, that you don't get a beep when you should, it's probably because there's something wrong with the wiring. Um, okay. So... This is a, yeah, this is, I mean, if you're able to kind of pause and teach everybody how to do this and kind of explain what it is, it's a really cool skill. Um, and if you have kids that are looking to go into any kind of career in anything to do with electricity, then this is something that they'll use. So um, the instructions are great is, is really what I will say about all of this is if, you, if you're not sure, read the instructions again and you'll, you'll get everything you need. Um, okay, we have like 30 seconds left. And I have a very quick five five question quiz, <laughs> which um, I will. Yay, quiz time. <laughs> that I'm sure you'll all get full credit on. Ali, can you see that? <laughs> you have high hopes. <laughs> you want me to launch the? Yeah, I, I can't see it again. I don't know why. Thank you. Okay, five quick questions. Can you see them? Yeah. Yeah. Can I cheat on it? Can you sure. cheat? Sure. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't even know what white circuits with load circuits, but it was blue, but white or red, I have no idea. <laughs> Take a guess and you'll then you'll know, then you'll learn something. I always feel like I only ever learn things when I get them wrong. Okay, we have one one answer, one set of answers in. Okay, so I kind of clicked on uh some random ones at the end. I do have to leave. Okay. Uh, they are they no, are locking the no doors <laughs> so i've got to go <laughs> i've got to go but um i will see you guys at the next one thank you so much hey thank you so yeah. much for coming it was great to meet my you. first one yeah thank you all right bye uh, <laughs> okay um i'm gonna click end poll how did i do <laughs> on the quiz when i click share results oh can you can you see the results uh yeah okay um, so you. both of you got the first one right the charge controller is the brains of the system um number two if it is yeah, installed with the text at the bottom what will happen one person said the system will explode that hopefully won't happen there's the receptacle will not charge is correct i don't think there's oh, anything that will make the system explode which is a good thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> um the color wires you got it right blue and white congratulations okay. <laughs> um continuity testing a beep means electricity can flow between the two points and common mistakes are all of the above how did you do i don't know which ones are you yeah. and which ones are you, helen did you get them all right yeah i got everyone okay. right <laughs> well done <laughs> okay well that is that is it for our um content do you do you want to stay on and ask some questions about equipment